The size of the Pacific Ocean is difficult to imagine. If you were to begin here, off the coast of northern Chile, and dig a hole straight through the earth until you emerged on the other side, you would find that you are still in the Pacific Ocean, but now you are in the South China Sea. With the exception of a few scattered islands that are also, for the most part, uninhabited, the Pacific Ocean takes up about a third of the Earth's total surface area and is larger than all of the land on the planet combined. Which means that if you ever have the misfortune of getting lost in this area, there is a very good chance that no one will ever find you. This is because nobody comes here very often. Because of this, the tale of José Salvador Alvarenga and how he was saved is even more compelling to hear about. He currently holds a world record for something that he did unintentionally, and probably no one else would ever want to be the longest at sea, because he fought all odds and lived for 438 days while being submerged in the ocean, it is highly unlikely that his record will be broken in the near future. But how exactly did he pull it off? The beginning of the story holds the answers we seek. Alvarenga was a skilled fisherman in Mexico in 2012. On the 17th of November, he and another guy named Ezekiel Cordova set sail together on their modest fishing vessel from the teeny tiny fishing village of Costa Azul, located on the Pacific coast of Mexico. They had only planned to work for a shift of 30 hours, so their boat was pretty small and not at all equipped for the nightmare that was about to unfold. It was more or less a small boat, but there was no roof or cabin on it. It was only seven meters long, and it had just one tiny motor and a refrigerator for storing their catch. They were aware that a storm was on its way to the region, but fishermen in these parts of Mexico can make enough money in a single day to provide for themselves and their families for an entire week. As a result, they made the decision to take a risk and move their workplace 75 miles inside in order to find work. The storm struck them at one in the morning and was threatening to sink their boat. In a state of panic, the two men broke their fishing lines, threw overboard everything they caught and the majority of their gear and cut their fishing lines in order to make their boats more maneuverable. They were only 15 miles away from the coast and could see mountains on the horizon when terrible luck struck them and their motor died. They were six hours away from the coast at the time and they traveled through the storm and the night in an attempt to get back as quickly as possible. The unusually strong wind began to push their boat back out towards the ocean, even though they did not have any paddles, oars, or sails with them. Their onboard radio, which thankfully continued to function, allowed them to quickly communicate their location to their supervisor, who informed them that he was on his way. Unfortunately, their battery died shortly after this, and all that they heard after that was silence. Imagine the frustration that they must have both felt at that precise moment as their radio went out, taking with it any and all contact with the outside world. And as they watched the mountains on the horizon, that they were so close to slowly disappear as the boat that they were trapped on was gradually pushed further and further out into the vast abyss. Imagine the frustration that they must have both felt at that particular time. Their manager did organize a search party that looked for them for several days, but as their boat drifted further out into the vastness of the ocean, it became harder and harder to find them, and they were eventually forced to give up the search. After only five days, the winds had already blown them 280 miles away from the coast before they were able to finally find some stability. They were completely surrounded by nothing but water on all sides, and their boat was so small that both of them were aware there was a high probability that they would not be seen from the air. They didn't have a flare gun or any other way to call for help besides waving, so they knew that their chances of surviving were going to be extremely low even before they started waving. They had no more supplies on board, so the only way for them to get food was to use their bare hands to catch the small fish and birds that had landed on their boat. They used the plastic bottles that they had found floating nearby in order to collect rainwater 
which they then used as drinking water for themselves. However, when there was an extended shortage of rainfall, they were compelled to survive primarily on the blood of turtles that they had captured by hand or on their own urine. Imagine being confined to a small space 24 hours a day, seven days a week for an entire year because there was only one other person to talk to and the only other way to entertain yourselves was by catching fish or napping. It is easy to understand how somebody could go insane under these conditions, which is what Alvarenga's friend did, according to the story that he told. Cordoba, the other man, became hopeless after approximately four months of their isolation and ultimately committed suicide as a result. Because he became ill from eating all of the raw food that they were consuming, he decided not to eat, and as a result, he died of hunger. It was then that Alvarenga found himself all by himself in the middle of nowhere, with no other human insight as far as the horizon could see. He was a tiny speck inside of the gigantic Pacific Ocean, and as you can see from this shipping map, the Central Pacific, which is where he was somewhere, is a very quiet part of the world. Even though ships only pass through this region rarely, he claims that he once came across one while he was by himself. It appears that a cargo ship went right by him, and four men on board spotted him and waved at him as they went by. However, they did not even bother to stop and instead continued moving past him. Imagine the level of frustration you would have felt if you had been lost for several months again. You were all by yourself when you finally spotted someone who could help you, but they simply ignored you and continued moving forward. After 11 months at sea, Alvarenga had covered approximately 5,000 miles in his weak little boat across the ocean. His clothing was in pieces, and he wore nothing but a sweatshirt to shield himself from the heat of the sun. But at last, on January 30th, 2014, he saw birds landing around him and coconuts floating in the water around his boat. He was aware that land was not far away, and after continuing his journey, he found an island that didn't seem to have any inhabitants on it. Even getting close to the shore took him a good portion of the day. When he finally decided to risk leaving the safety of his boat for the first time in more than a year, he jumped out and found a house. When he knocked on the door, he made contact with other humans for the first time since he left his village in Mexico. 438 days ago, after traveling nearly 7,000 miles to put into perspective just how far away that is, imagine beginning your journey in a tiny boat in Lisbon, Portugal, and traveling at a speed of less than one mile per hour until you wandered across the land to Hiroshima, Japan. This is the distance between the two cities. The Alvarenga eventually washed up on the coast of the Arvon Atoll, which is located on the southernmost point of the Marshall Islands, and is widely considered to be one of the most isolated locations on the entire planet. If he had missed this location, the next likely stop on his journey would have been the Philippines, which is approximately 3,100 miles further away. Given that it took him 438 days to travel approximately 7,000 miles, it is reasonable to assume that it would have taken him approximately 240 additional days to reach the Philippines. However, luck was on his side because he miraculously found himself on a tiny island, literally in the middle of the vastest ocean on the planet, where he was eventually located and rescued. Later, he was flown back to his home in El Salvador, where he published a book and found himself the target of a lawsuit filed by the family of his friend who lost his life on the boat due to the fact that they believe he probably ate him. The morale of this story is that even if you survive being shipwrecked for more than a year, you still run the risk of being sued for something that you might or might not have done. I want to thank you for watching.